Okay, got it. Okay, great. So, um, where do we start? So, tell me, um, yeah, so you're working on open AI stuff, and how does that, how does that relate to, you know, how there's all these big AI projects, like, whatever, Amazon, Google, the big guys are now supporting open AI projects. How does this differ, what you're doing? Because yeah. so you got the Alexa equivalent. Right. I think the biggest, I think the biggest difference is that um, we are privacy first, whereas okay. they are privacy kind of as a, you have to go in and manipulate a setting to, okay. you know, delete your data or do some, you know, they're by default, they are storing your data to use for, you know, various purposes. Um, by default, we are not storing anyone's data. It's deleted mm -hmm. immediately. Um, and if we do ask, we have a, an opt-in for training purposes for our data set to, um, you know, make the, the technology work better, but it is not for, for marketing purposes. So it's an anonymous data set and, um, you know, we're not going to need to use that to create an ad profile or something like yeah. that, so, uh, which, which some of the other companies do. So cool. I think that's, okay. that's our biggest differentiator. And then we do, um, we are intending to open up every part of our software. Mm -hmm. uh, right now, there's parts of our um, back end that are, are not open, but the goal is to open all of it, and that is another differentiator. So that kind of allows people to do pretty wide, varied uh, things with it, uh, including uh, stand up their own version of, of the Mycroft system, like end to end. Tell me about the strategy for, uh, so you're not opening it up right now. Why is that? Why is the decision to make it open later? Uh, well, part of it was um, business related and we, um, you know, we were a bit concerned that if, if we were to open all of it, that it's, um, you know, that, that it could be a, a, a potential business issue for us moving forward. I think one of our challenges has always been how do we how do we make this work as a business entity and also as an open source initiative with, um, you know, the goal to, to provide that uh, privacy minded and open alternative, but also balancing, okay, we, we do have to make a business out of this. Um, you know, we are yeah, but but we think we think opening it up is not going to hinder that. Uh, so that's the goal moving forward is to open that yeah. up. There's also been the issue too with uh, the security aspect of it being totally open, as we are, you know, storing API uh, information and some some um, you know things like that. Uh, so personal information as well. So but uh, for someone else, so I think moving forward. We're going to open it up with some some caveats and a license, and essentially that uh, you know if you're going to do this at an enterprise scale, there there needs to be some kind of license agreement with us. But if you're doing it for you know, nonprofit or or personal use, then no problems. So yeah, um, have you heard of open source ecology before? I contacted you. Yes. Yeah, I had uh, I'd seen your uh, TED talk actually, a f you know, year, a few years back, and. Um, I think I made a mental note somewhere that oh he's in he's in the the Midwest area in the Missouri area, and so I was uh, yeah I was aware of it. it was pretty cool stuff. I think I looked taking a look at the wiki real quick yeah. back then when I first saw the TED the TED talk. Where are you located? I'm um, in Lawrence, um, Lawrence, Kansas. So that's oh Lawrence, Kansas. I'm oh, no kidding. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so um, okay, yeah. So we're kind of not too far from each other. <laughs> Next and then, door. Okay. A lot of the, a lot of the team is in North Kansas City. Huh. Uh, so I make the trip up there at least once a week. Oh, interesting. And then, our CEO is from the area, but he is now uh, located in Hawaii. Mm -hmm. So, he's he's so we kind of a remote team. We have some people up in Sweden, and we have um, our community manager and develop, and he's also a developer as well as in Australia. Uh, so we have kind of a distributed team, but the the majority are here in the Kansas City Lawrence area. What's your role at at Mycroft? Are you are you the founder? Uh, I I'm not technically a founder, but I was the first brought on 
Um, so I was kind of here in the beginning, and everyone's got a stake in the organization, so we're all uh, owners to a certain degree. Um, but uh, yeah, my role is uh, chief design officer, and I've got an industrial design background, so I'm hardware and but more on the design side and more on the user experience side of things. And so I've kind of evolved into a bit of a mix of uh, both practicing design disciplines and kind of a bit of product um, owner and, and uh, manager in a certain degree, um, kind of helping to find what the product is. Um, and then I also, I, I'm kind of the only a uh, fully focused hardware person on the team right now. So I, mm -hmm. I design all the, the hardware in, in CAD and we've got a couple 3D printers. So I do all the um, prototyping there. And um, yeah, so, and then on the, the user experience side, I, I work with the developers to um, help define things in the voice experience in terms of helping kind of script, uh, you know, parts of it. You know, it is, it is uh, you know, not fully scripted, but we do come up with ways, um, the, the dialogues and whatnot that uh, you interact with, make sure that they sound natural and that uh, you don't get yourself into like a, you know, a, a dead end in a, in a conversational sense where you don't know how to proceed or what Minecraft can do. So kind of helping uh, write those dialogues and, and experiences and then, um, you know, overseeing some of the UI aspects aspects of it too, because we do have uh, a UI that we're working on, uh, traditional UI graphic that shows like um, you know weather forecasts and lists mm -hmm. and um, other other kind of additional. But it's you know it's much more pared down compared to like a a phone UI or something like that. Okay. Uh, let's see. How much have you looked at the curriculum that that I sent you, the proposed curriculum? And what, uh, I was going to ask you, what's interesting to you, or what can you learn or teach in it? Well, it looks like there's a lot I can I can learn. So <laughs> that that was very interesting to me. Um, so I've I've learned like coming from a design background, you know, I always worked with you know engineers and developers to kind of supplement. And then Microsoft is a very small team, so I had to I've had to learn some more traditional engineering things. Um, but again, it's just kind of tinkering. It's mm -hmm. engineering is not my, my uh, background. Um, so that there was definitely some things that very much interested me, especially in the, um, you know, like the, the circuit, um, mm -hmm. you know, prototyping tool and, um, you know, some of the, some of those, those things. But, uh, but I will be honest, I didn't get a chance to, to get too deep into it. Um, yeah, it's just, it's been a couple of uh, uh, busy days last couple of days for us so um, <clears throat> I, I kind of perused it but uh, okay um, <clears throat> circuit plotter so like for example the circuit plotter because so we have the we have the universal axis mm -hmm. uh, I don't know if you we, we do we build 3d printers we we did a CNC circuit mill before but basically the idea is with a basic CNC axis you can add heads to it like a simple application is one of 3D printers so that would be like the core on day one day two would be a circuit plotter where you're just adding an XY pen which then you right. can etch and then day three would be adding a motor that we make ourselves so there are pretty decent uh, pretty decent prior art exists on axial flux electric motors I don't know if does that word make any sense to you axial flux motors. Uh um, I am familiar with brush, brushless motors, but um, but yeah, getting into to the axial flux, I, I'm not not familiar with that term. Basically, pancake style, where you can stack a bunch of pancakes together and they're scalable, and they're mm -hmm. actually easier. I don't know if you've heard of Christoph Leimer, who did this 3D printed electric motor. Um, I can take a look. I've, uh, by the way, I just pulled up the 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 Steam Camp curriculum wiki. So yeah, at the very I'm, bottom I'm, is prior art, but yeah. if you Google. Uh, take a look at this link here. Uh, see the chat. That's Limer. Yep. He did this funky, amazing 3D printed motor with magnetic PLA. Well, it turns out uh, we can do much simpler, probably a little bit more efficient, and like one third the cost using this axial flux design. 
all that. So I first got excited about this when I saw this, but then looking at it, it's like, okay, this is super complicated, not something we can sure. do like in a second. Because we're into just really empowering people to show them that, wow, you can build amazing stuff. Just like I've learned my whole life, like when I first built the tractor and things like that, it just opens up your mind in such a way. Uh, so we want to show that to people. Um, so mm -hmm. that's the basics. And then from there going into actually like when we make battery packs, the, th the last day is like making battery packs, but basically you stack a bunch of battery packs together uh, and you have a cordless welder. Those exist, you know? And so that means just yeah. using the Arduino controller to do a simple power modulation device using the, the same controller that we have on that whole 3D printer mill plotter infrastructure. So we have this universal access CNC system. You've got the universal controller. And then you, you're in business uh, with basic skills that you can start building scalable things because everything we design is scalable, like the motor, like that design lends itself to then you go on to electric vehicle mo motors for changing mobility and stuff like that. So we want to take it at the very basic level of uh, teaching people, yes, we can do this. And it's, it's about open source product development where with the core, the simple core that we present in the first four days, it's like you can literally get into making 80% of the stuff that's on Amazon. Uh, right. Vacuum robots, drones, uh, Raspberry Pi tablets, all that kind of stuff. Those were the three proposed projects that we have. Um, well, so, I'll tell. Yeah, I've, I've got something here that, and I'm, I'm sure, maybe I'm not sure if you were interested in, yeah. and you know, what Mycroft could yeah. could do in terms of that. But um, so yeah. we're trying to, and well, actually, what I'm trying to do currently is release some documentation on how we're prototyping mm -hmm. for our next our next uh, iterative device and it's right now it's all raspberry pi based it's all like kind of off the shelf stuff most of it is is open um we try to use as much open as we can we're using a um a microphone board from a company called seed uh studios, seed studios sure, uh, yeah. yeah and um we're using i can drop in the link here we're using that as our um as our main microphone array and then we're using a um a, uh, a Raspberry Pi uh, 3 and then um, you know we're, we're basically putting it all together in a bit of a custom configuration and this is uh, here is our kind of development version that's of your kind of, of your device of your automated yeah. of your AI device yeah so this is the kind of laser cut uh, quick and dirty version that right. we use um, and so we've got a nice Kind of, uh, we developed a, a loudspeaker design that sounds pretty good with drivers you can get pretty pretty readily available. And we've got that micro I was talking about on top there. And mm -hmm. um, the, the, the Pi is kind of sandwiched onto a, a display um, that has touch, a capacitive touch display that you can get pretty, pretty readily, readily available. And then down at the bottom, we just have a, a kind of simple power board that uh, allows us to run the 12 volts uh, for the amplifier, and then the rest of it's uh, five volt, which is you know pretty common with those kind of dev boards and stuff. So yeah, up underneath there's also an amplifier board. So yeah, that's all wired together in a kind of um, we have to to use that GPIO off of the Pi to talk to the amp board, and then most of everything else is kind of USB. Um, but that's uh, and then if, you know we've got a, a kind of a a custom build of Raspbian with our stuff on top of it that we're using uh, currently, which is a bit limited in terms of what we're doing with the screen. Um, we're just continuing to add on to that, but uh, the full mm -hmm. voice interaction is all is all there. So, very cool. Um, what do you use? So, do you actually have you're selling your devices right now? Not these, but this is a prototype for like a more open version. Yeah, well, this um, there's it, things were kind of in flux. We so we originally partnered with a group out in California to do some of our hardware development, and that kind of fell out. Um, we ran into an issue uh, that just we couldn't get past, and we decided to part ways and move back to um, using more off the shelf and readily available and as open as possible uh, boards. So we were pursuing our own custom, fully custom designs, and we were going to open those as well. Um, but it, 
ran into to some some issue there. So now our current development track is, you know, using these boards, and we know that at this this uh, current design, like the bomb cost is is really too high for you know say a product that you would want to compare apples to apples with an Echo uh, or a Google Home. Uh, the issue ultimately there is they, they are actually subsidizing their costs in uh, a lot of ways because they're you know getting revenue from ads and other things. Um, so I guess what I'm getting at is long-term strategy is we may uh, reach out, we've talked to um, Element 14 and some of the people that actually work with uh, Raspberry Pi to develop their boards of possibly um, taking um, that um, um, compute module or something similar that they use and uh, building us a custom board that includes some of the, the amplifier and some of the other, the power management, some of the other stuff to get get it kind of consolidated a little bit to save costs. Um, of course, again, we would open that um, hardware and share all the, the Gerber files and, and the, um, you know, everything necessary, the uh, schematics, et cetera. Uh, but currently, um, we're just, we're just uh, happy with getting this to work well. And then when we uh, are are uh, satisfied there, then we will start looking at how to to jump back into hardware. We're a little custom hardware, that is. We're a little um, cautious right now about that and, and focusing on, you know, these boards and getting the software to work well. Mm -hmm. How would you rate, your, rate yourself um, in terms of open from like 1 to 10? Um, I, I mean, I think we're pretty high up there. Um, you know, maybe not quite ten, like I said, because we do have that the back the back end is not totally open yet, but mm -hmm. we do intend to do so. Um, and the only thing I might maybe give us a, an eight or nine um, because of that, uh, and then you know we can always do better for sure. I think some stuff that gets um, put off a little bit at times is the documentation. Uh, we might have something out there that's technically it is open but we haven't got around to documenting it as well as we would like so, um, so I'm guilty you, of that a bit on the hardware I'm, I'm kind of in a mode right now where I'm trying to get more documentation on that so yeah uh, as far as the pack so regarding the steam camp thing the idea there was literally the, the mindset I have it's like okay we, we we get some top players together to develop killer curriculum and make it actually work as a viable way to fund open source product development because during every camp we take the product and improve it in some way um, through the yeah. actual direct working like the, there's five days of real prototyping four days of the boot camp and then five days of projects um, but with that the idea is that we're making real products that are competitive value proposition is probably like lifetime design because once you build it like for example a cordless drill they have planned obsolescence built into them for your, you know, DeWalt drill or whatever. For us, it's, um, I think our value proposition as that example is perhaps like $3 billion a year if we convert that market because drills may live three, three years and they're a $10 billion market. So we're literally, I think there's a huge value proposition there. But anyway, um, getting people to produce things effectively as small businesses literally to one fund open source product development but also to fund an open source product development lifestyle the fact that you should only have to work a little bit so for the steam camp the idea is okay nine days of your life um maybe two weeks all together up front and then the rest of it so it's like 50 percent, and then you can do what you want with your life because actually this would pay your bills that's the kind of deal we're we're trying to get to a package where you literally have to do, like when i when i talk in my some of my videos i say uh should spend like at two hours per day you should be working and then other stuff is pursuing self-determination and making a better world kind of deal that's where sure. that's what our gig is and we're trying to get there um so given all of this i mean first of all do you have the would you have the time to put into at this point to develop help us develop this or yeah i i think i mean uh, we're you're very busy here but i i i'm very much in line with with a lot of 
of the things that you're talking about. Okay, so and, let me let me stop you there. So, what specific yeah. like you know, there's the package of the Steam Camp. Um, there's actually just just to let you know another aspect of this. Our next mode of development is to do incentive challenges because we found we've been doing it for a decade and we found we cannot scale con volunteer contributions or anything like that. Software has sure. worked it out by modularity and remote participation. For us, it's like we really, I think we nailed the extreme builds. Like we can build a tractor in one day. We build a printer in one day. We build a house in five days with 50 people. That's the kind of things we have done so far. Um, but we haven't nailed the development part. So what we're trying to do is do a, a well-funded incentive chance. So we're looking for the cordless drill, um, the world's first open source 3D printed professional grade cordless drill from trash. So it includes plastic recycling infrastructure in that as a small uh, garage uh, operation where we're looking at 250K for the, the reward on Hero X. Hero X is the incentive challenge platform that's a spin-off mm. of uh, XPRIZE. You've heard of that? HeroX.com. Yeah, not, not HeroX specifically, but I'm familiar with XPRIZE. With X -Prize. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, so we're trying to nail the, the incentive challenge, but if we're going to have large quantities of people participate, so we're talking about 1,000 to 5,000 people participating in that, we got to have our open source tool chain and ability to work with open hardware. And that's part of the reason why we want to do this Steam Camp, because we're going to teach you open source printing, milling, circuit making, free CAD, key CAD, uh, all the open source tool chains to make it happen uh, to really uh, our goal is it's not humble it's it, we want to take it take the economy to the next level of, from proprietary to a collaborative economy where you have a choice to either develop products in your own hole reinvent the wheel do a lot of competitive waste or you're actually working together and eliminating all the competitive waste so so things like the the patents and all of that that goes by the wayside but we're still in a, a sure. stage of, of complete scarcity mindset on, on this whole picture. So the Steam Camp would provide some of the basic skills so that if somebody wants to do the incentive challenge, they can participate and be fully equipped with all the open source tools, open source CAD, and so forth. So with all this said, so that's kind of like the bigger picture here, how this relates to some of our other work. But wh which part of this is most appealing to you? Like wh what's attractive for you in this? Uh, I think there's definitely, I mean, as a person, personally, uh, there's a couple of things that are, that are attractive to me. I, I have been an instructor at University of Kansas as an adjunct, and I do enjoy teaching, and um, I think that being involved in this team camp uh, has some appeal there. I know there's parts of it that I would be able to contribute, um, but uh, there's some parts mm -hmm. that are kind of outside of my wheelhouse. Yeah. Um, you know, I'm pretty familiar in 3D printing, and I'm familiar in CAD, and I've got a good uh, free CAD? concept. Did you, did you ever do free CAD or? I just downloaded it like yesterday okay. to, to take a look. I'm I've used SolidWorks. I've used yep. uh, Autodesk 360, uh, Fusion 360, um, Rhino. Uh, yep. I mean, I, I assume if it's if it's got some similarity. To, yeah, to I mean, you'll pick it up. And we had people in a workshop pick up a basic workflow in about forty minutes. Okay, cool. Oh, yeah, go, and go. Then, yeah, usually where I get in, you know, it's like I said, I was an industrial design background. Usually, where I start to run into the things that take a little bit of time to learn is like when you're trying to do like complicated surfacing and things like that. And, yeah. But for for general general stuff, yeah, that shouldn't take me much time. Um, so yeah, I have some interest in that. Uh, just um, and I, I think that that I I would like to get uh, what we're doing with Mycroft out um, out there a little bit better. You know, getting people. I think part of the the issue with us right now is there's a bit of a cost barrier. Mm -hmm. um, you know, some of these dev boards we're using, like the mic board, is like seventy dollars, and so by the time you get everything together, you're in a you know, close to two hundred dollars in parts, um, so there might be some opportunity there for us to explore ways to make this this an open version of this more affordable. Um, that would be very interesting to me, and I I have not heard about your um, your drill uh, initiative, uh, or if that's something that you're just launching. But we're going to launch that September twenty twenty. We're we're preparing. Okay. Yep. Um, but you know, I've had 
I've had some thoughts of, around the, um, the cordless tool uh, space, and lately I've been um, I've been kind of looking at uh, you know what you can do with um, things like track saws and uh, things like that that uh, seem to be quite um, capable in in terms of uh, you know that versus your traditional like table saws and like all these kind of bulky um, working tools mm -hmm. um, and then you know looking into that and saying wow these things are like five six hundred bucks for these these you know <laughs> track saws and that stuff and so I I don't know I I'd, I'd uh, you know I thought about playing around with some of that um, exploring those cordless tools and and what could be done to to make some of those things more more accessible um, so I mean there's some there's some appeal there yeah, I think you're right too like you have all these these kind of um, companies out there kind of trying to to keep you locked into their ecosystems by you know having different charging systems yeah. different battery right. voltages all these you're just kind of like it's kind of crazy that um you know really they're all very similar you know they just uh, yeah. you yeah. know they're just locking you into to maximize profit and right yeah Actually, not very, change, very change compatible the, right they changed it the, i've heard read about they change the battery factor to make make your drill useless form factor of the battery and then you can't use your drill anymore because you can't get batteries right yeah. yeah yeah so i think that's that's actually a pretty very cool project um mm -hmm. so yeah yeah uh, so anyway <laughs> there's there's a lot multiple interests i suppose um yeah I think yeah. uh, being connected to the design community in terms of the university here at University of Kansas, yeah. um, I think that if we ran a workshop here, there would we would probably find a lot of interest. Yeah, yeah, because the economics are like if we get twelve people to show up, that's like we wanted to do it like fifty fifty revenue share. Twelve people is like five k. Twenty four people is like nine k. Or something like that uh, there's a spread spreadsheet I've got on that but um, the first thing is to essentially uh, develop the stuff because we've done a lot of work on on the universal axis like for example we scaled it up to like one inch and even two inch for the rods so that yeah. you can make a big CNC machine so uh, made a torch table with it larger 3d printers um, what's the point of that scalability is there and uh, definitely revenue potential for a lot of lot of different products um so would you maybe i mean one of the projects in there is the raspberry pi tablet as as it stands uh you think maybe you could develop help us develop that um yeah i think so and to be honest if it's uh i mean Built yes. on prior art, of course. I mean, there's stuff that already works out there, and and the simplest case is, we just replicate what somebody else did. But hope, but I mean, there's always limits. So always, how do you improve it a little bit? Go sure, ahead. sure. Yeah. Uh, I've I've got some familiarity with you know how to use kind of the Raspberry Pi as a base for something, knowing you know it's got. I mean, have you have you looked at the Kano? Um, computer kit it's it's no. a commercial it's a it's more of a commercial deal um but it's kind of interesting how they ad adopted the the um ka you know how they adopted the raspberry pi into a a, a product oh <clears throat> oh interesting yeah okay uh so there's a lot of things in there that they're doing i mean really if you crack it open it's for the most part uh you know it's like one of those rechargeable um, battery packs, like you know, you just charge a phone kind of, and then uh, a couple custom boards for a few things. But um, really, it's just these all these kind of little custom, custom deals that go all up. Um, <clears throat> but yeah, I uh, I would definitely I'd be interested in that. I think um, I have some familiarity with working around the pie and and hardware wise. 
Um, yeah. So for sure. And it could be cool too, because, you know, if we get the right things on that, you know, we could do a version that it acts as a, as a Mycroft device too. Yeah, absolutely. So, so the idea for that is the Pi could be a controller for all the devices in there. Like, for example, even if we go about doing the cordless drill, it might be a smart drill that's, you know, you can maybe change its, change its charging settings using the tablet. You know, because we think of the tablet like we have, for example, the brick press. Yes, let's, let's use the tablet as the controller so we don't have to put that extra hardware on a brick press. Let's have it wireless to the mm -hmm. to the brick press where there it's a case of safety too you know so but the controller i could see this the the pi tablet like either to control mycroft or mm -hmm. that's the you know put some add-ons to that and that is mycroft you know um, yeah i could definitely see the, the, being a s synergy there um yeah yeah Yeah, no, I'm, I'd be interested in that for sure. So, what's what are our what's the next steps? So in right now, um, I'm pretty much full time uh, getting the team together, and I I got a couple of pretty good kinds. Of, I'm just actually talking to um, right after you. I'm talking to you know the people from Axiom, the open source camera. From yeah, the, yeah, those guys they're pretty good. Uh, so I'm talking to them. They're interested, but we're building a team. Uh, to see who wants to put this together because uh, essentially like uh, to tell you the story here it's like um for me over the last 10 years i'm saying okay i'm done working myself this is about we got to get the teams and get the top players working together um and i think this could be a way to bootstrap fund uh, a lot of open hardware development so yeah. it's like i'm saying okay help me i need help here um this is something that can benefit the world and so forth. So I'm just recruiting people and trying to put together, okay, if there's the curriculum there, I think that curriculum is pretty pretty sound, like for uh, definitely for OSE needs and I think for needs of many open hardware projects as far as a basic prototyping platform. Um, so I think that's pretty sound and just trying to get people to collaborate on that. Uh, and I would ask, I mean, do you know any other people that might be interested in being instructors? Uh, yeah, I think I could I could look around and, and see. Um, you know, there's definitely people in Mycroft, like I said, I'm, I'm kind of the only primary hardware person, but we have, mm -hmm. you know, people that are more software people that are, are used to working in, you know, software for hardware. Um, that they might be of interest because um, you know some I can get something plugged up and and going and and then the software can be a problem you know um, yeah and uh, there's some people through KU like I said that might be interested some professors I could I could reach out to uh, have you any contact over there no I don't okay um, yeah I could. I could reach out and see if anyone over there has any interest. Um, yeah, and then okay. of course, you know, Mycroft has a pretty active community, and some people in within the community are very capable hardware-wise as well. Um, so we could possibly do, a, you know, a, a reach out through through that. Do you want me to write you up like a little invite, or do you want to do that, or? Like basically what I sent you, but it might need some more details. But the idea is it's kind of like a complex thing. So I'm just trying to get people to read this email. And because uh, I'm kind of just right now contacting everybody. In op like I got your, you through the open hardware directory. Yeah. Um, just trying to look up all of YouTube, just people who might be relevant on YouTube and any other places. I'm trying to find the people who are DIY, open source centric. Um, that could be super cooperators. Uh, but it's essentially about getting a team of super cooperators who are not afraid to uh, work together and do something much bigger. Yeah. 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 Uh, I'm. I'm very interested. In, and I'll look and see if I can find any other good, you know, so, high high quality candidates. Yeah. So I expect to be doing this for another two weeks. But what we should do, um, I mean, right now, if you were to take on the 
the tablet that's a very explicit thing like we don't have like right now we're considering the tablet the vacuum robot and the drone as like top three candidates which are good consumer products diy open source friendly um but maybe we can say have you like uh until further notice like we'll be building the team and maybe we find somebody else who's like oh yeah i really want to do the tablet maybe you could work together and all that so we'll see who sure. comes to the table but so far i've got a couple of people that are pretty strong candidates one guy yale fox who's another he's a software guy but he's um he's another ted fellow and he's well connected so we're working together just uh, talked to him yesterday another guy michelle dory this guy let me show you this uh, link here but he does um, on this link, that's you know, take a look at that. That's that's kind of how our 3D printer looks these days. But uh, that's an explodable, like you can explode that thing. This one guy who does the this HTML WebGL stuff, and he actually designed the initial, like, the, the initial CAD of these uh, universal axis pieces, like, he did the initial work on that, so he's he's very much interested. Uh, he's from uh, Belgium. So that's the two people so far. It looks like he might be taking on the electric motor part, but for me, like, I would probably do, I mean, of course, obviously, like, we want to work with this universal axis system, and w when we talk about the simple printer, uh, just to show you, it's called d3d simple but it's a three axis version of that okay. so that's how it looks in now take a look at that in free cad but basically you strip that down to three axes and start with this as the basic kind of a working working unit uh so i would prepare that and what we'd have to do is like once we get further down the road we want to do a kickoff meeting uh, and i would say like within the next next three weeks or so like once i gather the team and I'll continue to to coordinate with you and and update you on who's who's who on a team so far that we're looking at. And I should probably send an email to three of us so far, so so you, Yale, and this guy Michelle, um, and start coordinating so that we can start talking about it. What you know? What, how do we div divvy up the curriculum? And maybe if you can take a look at it in more detail. Um, uh, you should take a look at it in that infographic or that those flow charts there they kind of show um if you take a look at um yeah this the slide uh yeah, the starts slide with there what you see yeah. in there is like the three machines the 3d printer circuit plotter cnc mill and then you can get into making a lot of different things so we want to make our own arduino uno that can then go back into the universal controller the arduino uno could also be because you can do that pretty much pretty easily from scratch um simple power sources that are basically rectifiers and pulse width modulators that you can show okay now i can control like tons of power through this simple controller yeah battery chargers scalable battery packs cordless welders i wanted to get to that cordless welder because that's when the start sparks start flying and it comes right out of like say we do a workshop and we build a battery pack for uh part as part of the workshop well put 10 of those are 12 okay there's gonna be 12 built put 12 of them together so design a module that you can interconnect them and that's like 200 amps right there yeah. which is enough for a welder so using the universal controller you can get a welder application so just, just do a simple prototype of wow you can do a welder and then maybe in another event we take that welder to actual product because those products do exist and uh, way at the bottom of that page there's uh open source prior art just a bunch of links to all the stuff that we know of that exists out there you might want to take a look at that uh, to kind of get inspired how this fits together but if you've got the electric motor and controllers and ability to do 3d print parts yeah i mean that's huge right there um so yeah yeah oh uh, yeah i'm just i don't know things are are spinning you know i i think in the that electric motor space i'm you know thinking of you know, there's personal mobility options. Oh, yeah. There's, yeah. you know, uh, I think that's something that's going to be big as we move forward with electric, um, you know, vehicles, uh, and people start realizing there's more opportunity in in the personal size as opposed to everyone having a car. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. But yeah, all kinds of there's all kinds of things that could could spin out of it for sure. Yep. 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 
Yeah. So, do you have any questions or anything? Anything else or? Um. Yeah, I think the biggest thing I want I kind of want to make a point of is is that um, I I do like I like to work collaboratively and I like to have a kind of counterpart that's more on the heavy engineering side because I find I'm I'm kind of more on the you know I do a lot of mechanical design and stuff but I'm kind of more on the the traditional design and and um, I kind of like to say I'm the the kind of human element focus. <laughs> um, mm -hmm. So. So yeah, I definitely would uh, would be very much interested in collaborating with someone uh, that has a good counterpart to my skills. Um, and uh, yeah, I think uh, things are, are very, very busy at Mycroft. Um, we are kind of in a fundraising mode right now. We are kind of um, juggling a lot of things. So I think that's something I need to, to really think about too, is just make sure I'm at, I have adequate time to to dedicate to this. Yeah. And um, yeah. so I, I do need to think about that a little bit. Uh, but um, yeah. As an initial, just having thought about for the last couple of days, I'm, I'm very interested. I just I don't want to kind of over promise to yeah. a certain degree. You know? Yeah. <clears throat> yeah. So, mm -hmm. yeah, and, and if there's some, you know, I think that's where maybe for Mycroft, there's some benefit too to promote uh, what we're doing if uh, with the tablet. I think that could be very interesting. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Okay. Yeah, so let's let's keep in touch. Um, yeah, maybe go over the curriculum a little more, see if you see what you see in there, see if you can, you know, at the very least, let, recommend some other people and, and see if um, anyone else, we can find anybody else to make this happen. Yeah, yeah, great. Okay, well, I'll do that. And, um, oh, well, quick question. How many how many of the um, the camps have you ran so far? Uh, we ran, so we've been doing workshops forever, and then we decided, hey, let's do STEAM camps. So in this nature of more like the STEAM camp, I mean, we really did like the one about two months ago from which this whole initiative sprouts because we had I was like people were it was quite well received and people were saying well how do I start running these so some people were interested in potentially running the these as an enterprise and I said yeah we want to teach you because we want to spread this so we really started pushing along the line hey let's make this a viable revenue model that can scale uh, so so we had one we had 18 people show up so uh, we had like eighteen or nineteen thousand dollars revenue from that one. Um, we see there's definitely a revenue model. Like people are willing to drop a, a thousand bucks on this and and more if it's amazing content. So, uh, and I think we can really push the side of technology that matters. It's not just some random Steam camp where you do trivial stuff. It's there's a direct connection to making real things that comes out of it. So I think we're well positioned on that. Um, yeah. So, but just one from before. But I want to run a whole bunch of these. Like, I want to, I want to see this developed as a good program, so so that we can be feeding people also into the incentive challenges through this. Like the people we train in the workshops themselves, they they'll be well positioned to do the incentive challenges and build that up that way. Mm -hmm. Right. Very cool. Yeah. How many? So, how many instructors were involved in that? Uh, one? That was two of us, myself and William Neal. So take a look at, well, let me send you a link since you, I don't think you saw that. Uh, Steam Camp. Yeah, and I mean, we're, we totally redid the, based on the learnings from that one, we completely redid the curriculum. Pretty much. We found that, no, you don't need to try to build a heavy-duty CNC mill. Start with very simple things that everybody takes home. Because that's what we did last time. We, we prototyped part of the heavy-duty CNC mill with a huge universal axis, like with two-inch shaft size and the, ro the rod size. Um, but mm -hmm. that was just myself and William and Katerina, uh, so two or three of us. Um, yeah, but the, we found that we spent way too much money on materials. Um, we lost some people at the end because they were like, dude, this is too intense. So we're trying to make it smaller. 
um, more relevant to where one of the design points has to be everyone has to take a product home that they're proud of. So yeah. in this camp, they're going to walk away with a printer, a plotter, and a mill. And then they're going to do one product that they take home that will work and that'll be the product that we continue developing. So right now with the vacuum, um, robot vacuum, the drone, or the Pi tablet. So the sure. materials cost for this whole whole thing is there's like three or four hundred dollars in materials out of that price tag and the price tag right now is looking at around thirteen hundred fourteen hundred or so there for the camp um, but that's I, I think the curriculum is well worth it and we've got some good feedback I think feedback is really positive so we're just going with this this is basically our learnings from the last steam camp like make it make it more manageable and get people to do it get a team that develops it because to develop that curriculum is going to be a little bit of effort but after that's done, after we've got it all developed, it's going to be much easier and we can uh, focus more on like refining products than creating the curriculum. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. No, well, yeah, this is that's very interesting. Thanks for for uh, reaching out. And, yeah. And um, yeah. how far how far are you from Kansas City? An hour. In the Missouri. An hour. Okay. Yeah. So you're probably like uh Hour and forty minutes from from where I'm at. So. Yeah, uh, how far are you from St. Joe? You're like an hour, right? Uh, yeah, yeah, probably about an hour. Yeah. Should meet in St. Joe. So. There's this other dude in St. Joe that wants to actually start up some of this, but yeah, we should meet sometime. But yeah, let's think about it in the future. Uh, yeah, for sure. You guys are so close. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Well, I'm gonna take a look at this. Uh, take a look at the wi the stuff you've shared in the wiki on the the Steam Camp, and um, talk to some people that I might know that might be interested, and I'll you know, look for your email with some of the other members that you already reached out to. Okay. Hi, right, Dark. Well, thanks. So we'll be in touch then. Uh, All right. Great. Yeah. Take care. Thanks, Martian. Bye bye. You too. Bye.